On this arid land, extending from the Pacific shores to the desert escarpment, the Kumeyaay Indians once lived in a prosperous society. With the arrival of the Spanish, their territory was reduced to small tracts on both sides of the international border. Here in Baja, California, the Kumeyaay culture ekes out an existence as in this small settlement of Nahi. Like many of the Indian communities south of the border, the Kumeyaay must scavenge for themselves. They are a mix of the ancient and the modern. Where once there were hunter-gatherers, they now subsist on what the men can make as cowboys and unskilled laborers. Like their ancestors, they use what their land has to offer to provide shelter. This is the oldest type of house, built of arrowweed stalks tied to a framework of poles. The metal drum is used for storing water for drinking and washing. Other structures employ a combination of thatching and mud and rock walls. The low roofs are convenient to store items that must be kept handy. Items we would toss out are scattered around the buildings. Everything is too precious to throw away because it may eventually be fashioned into something useful. There is one house built of commercial brick hauled here from the nearby town of Takati. It's uncommon for a settlement to build with relatively expensive materials. Several families share this dwelling. This unfinished house is made of locally produced sun-dried adobe brick and represents a customary Mexican style of construction. It's common to use any available materials to form a dwelling. These brush and sheet metal walls with its partial roof surround the cooking hut and common eating area. The women are preparing flour tortillas, the mainstay of the Kumeyaay and Mexican diet. Once these Indians harvested pumpkins, gathered acorns, pine nuts, agave, honey, and hunted rabbits, deer, opossums, rats, and snakes. Today, they eat a high carbohydrate diet of common Mexican fare, occasionally supplemented with meat. Most meals cooked over the fire are prepared at either end of the day when the sun is not so hot. Loretta is keeping an eye on the slabs of meat brought as a gift by the filmmakers. This is an uncommon treat because they keep the few livestock they own for providing milk. Game is scarce and they have few weapons to hunt with. Reported to be about 100 years old, Loretta can still pound acorns for a tole a bitter tasting paste made from acorn meal and water. It was once a mainstay, but is now more of a treat for the old people. As usual in simpler societies, children learn to do chores early. One of the women wets down the area to minimize the dust as she sweeps the dirt floor. The women in this settlement share tasks like washing, cooking, caring for the children, gathering firewood, and carrying water from the stream. The nearby stream runs year-around, 
and a small reservoir has been formed by a local rancher making it easier to collect water. The local ranchers employ many of the Kumeyaay men as cowboys. They herd the cattle from one pasture to another and help with branding and slaughtering. Their work provides the money to buy supplies at the nearest town. Each morning, the Kumeyaay children awaken early to milk the goats and cows owned by the Indians. The milk is an important source of protein and can be processed into cheese for future use. The adults share these duties when they're not working for others. The same stream that flows by Nahi winds its way 15 miles through the hills to a Kumeyaay rancho, Ha'a. A single more prosperous family lives here. They raise horses to sell to local ranchers, so their daily existence is not as dependent on the land as in Nahi and is well supplemented by bartering and selling livestock. Leonor is making cheese, an important source of protein for this family. A little sour milk is added to the fresh milk and in 24 hours it ferments and becomes curds and whey. Salt is added, then most of the whey is squeezed out by hand. Then it's placed in a cheese press to remove the last of the whey and press the curds into cheese. It's a simple press made of salvaged items such as the engine head that hangs from the log. After 24 hours, the curds have become cheese. The Kumyais have existed for centuries in a rugged land by adapting to what it provides. Once nomadic, they roam freely from ocean shore to the desolate desert eking out an existence by resourcefulness that modern man might find impossible. They are by necessity a hardy people. As the modern world encroaches, they will adapt, assimilate, and migrate, but they will never entirely vanish.